that, uh, that Brampton was going to even up that one and then suddenly built on that momentum and then won again in Brampton the night before. And as you say, they've still got five more meetings and they're going to be critical as far as this team trying to move up the standings. Matt Carlett drops the puck. One of our referees tonight action underway here at the Sudbury Arena as the Wolves try to rebound after a subpar effort against the Niagara Ice Dogs last weekend. Jones, Odell, he'll get by his man. Odell comes out, a little bit of skating room into Stahl. There's a shot they score. John Kurtz on the power play. 1-0 Sudbury. Very nice passing play to the tail end of that, Stu, but I thought there was a play. If you go back about 45 seconds, John Kurtz cutting through the neutral zone. There's a pass that comes across. He's got the defenseman right on him. And Kurtz with the presence of mind simply to redirect the puck into the net. That basically gave them a chance at possession down deep. Now they made some nice plays in order to give themselves a little bit of room. Eric O'Dell made a great read here, as we see on this play. Spots um, Jared Stahl and a lovely pass. And actually, if you look at it, Kurtz took about a second longer than I think he would normally like to, but it worked in the end. Ken Para with a pass ahead. Carrick looks for somebody in front. There's Stage, and that was nicely done. And on the power play, Brampton ties up the game at one. Yeah, the Wolves just didn't do a very good job of recognizing that that was a three on two. Marcus Bellino was the back player. McFarland had gone up on the four attack. And when they hit the line, you could see there were three. And the two defenders, there it is there. Well, that's that's their forward's got to get back on that. Somebody's got to help out. Because you're leaving Sefton. Now, Sefton probably should stay with Stage on that one. But either way, if he, if he takes Stage, and there's a guy left open, wide open in front. As they're crossing the blue line, we'll probably get a chance maybe in the intermission to have a look at that one. They're led down. And it was Kurtz on the power play for the Wolves. And Stajan for Brampton with the man advantage. Reese in front. They bang away and they score. Marcus Foligno, I think. Yeah, once again, that's, that's I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to take a look at his scoring stats because Marcus has been, I won't say he's on a tear, but he certainly, when you compare his first 20 games to maybe his last 15 or so, contributing far more offensively. Nice play by Steven Reese. He freezes it here. He's looking for the pass at this point. Decides to hold on because there really isn't anybody open. And Marcus goes hard to the net and gets a stick to an area. That's all it is. Just going hard to the net. Keep your stick on the ice. Puck out to center ice. Tansky gets it by Septon. Now he's trying to settle the puck. Carries it in behind the net. Trying to bang it out in front. And it's loose in the crease. They score. And I was just going to say Scott Tansky to me may have been maybe one of the better Brampton players tonight in terms of really hustling and creating things off of the uh, work ethic. And there you see it there. I probably shouldn't have said anything about protecting <laughs> the lead. That was a kiss of death, it seems. But there's Tansky, nice job with moving the, the uh, puck ahead to his stick, or trying to, with his uh, with his foot on that one. Goes the wrap around, and it goes up and off the arm of uh, Valaket on that. So that was just a, another good example. Well, not quite the same as Felino's goal, yeah. but... And here we go. Maggio is dropping the puck. This is coming, and the linesmen are going to go in and break that one up before they even get together. And you know what? That's what... Well, they did warn about this when the helmet rule came in about a year ago. They said, you want to drop the gloves, go, but you're not going to spend 30 seconds, 40 seconds setting up a dance card. So it was Clark and Maggio, a pair of defensemen. They wanted to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe, now Maggio having a good chat with one of the referees as he's being escorted to the penalty box. Clark, the same, right in front of the Sudbury bench. Good solid hit there from Felino. Now we're going to have a scrap as Felino drops the gloves. With uh, Carrick. With Sam Carrick, and Felino has landed a couple already. Now Carrick. As a definite size advantage here for Felino. <laughs> Got to give Carrick a little bit of credit. They're stepping up against Marcus Felino as Felino trying to get the home crowd going. I, you know, I, I don't disagree, Stu, although you're, you know, you're going to have detractors that sit there and say, <laughs> okay, so what exactly are you protecting? You're protecting a solid, clean hit. There was absolutely, I, hopefully we've got that hit on, on replay. There was absolutely. Reese. Spins away from a hit after the puck in the corner. And it's Alicock digging it loose. Alicock finds a little opening. And his shot knocked down in front. They score. Is Eddie Rinky there to make it 3-2? Wolves capitalizing on a little bit of a lucky bounce there as uh, Alicock just simply directed that puck in the net, hoping that something good might come of it. Well, it squirts loose right to Eddie Rinky off to the side. And he had nothing but net to look at on that one. Uh, a couple of plays earlier, I thought, 
Ricky was open. I wish he would stop hitting his stick. I don't. I, you know, by the time you're hitting away, Kel, don't slam your stick on the ice for a pass. Players know where you are. Uh, but you know, we see it once in a while. Uh, and I noticed that, but Ricky didn't. didn't or sorry, um, Alcock didn't didn't send it to him earlier. This one shot just over top of the net. Now here comes McFarland. Kurtz trying to catch up. McFarland with a shot. He scores. Four to Sudbury. With just 2.1 seconds remaining in the second period, the advantage there, that, and you know, some, sometimes things just have to work your way. John McFarland coming down the left wing is going right by the bench, and I guarantee you, as he's skating by, there's got to be half the bench yelling at him exactly how much time he has. So he knows as he hits the line, I've got time to make one play. It's one or the other, and give McFarland credit. That's a great shot. And you know, a couple of guys... And the second's winding down. There's a long shot. And that goes high over top of the net as the seconds tick down. Peroff takes a long shot. That's going to do it. As the Wolves will take their 4-2 lead from the second period and they make it stick. Absolutely. And, you know, you called it before the start of the third period, Sue. So just a nice, solid third period of hockey was what they were looking for. And for the most part, I think Coach Polino got that. Yeah, shots on goal end up 34-26. So the uh, Wolves get only four shots in that third period. And meantime, 16 shots for the Brampton Battalion in the uh, final period of the hockey game. But uh, I think you, you pointed it out, a lot of them were long shots and uh, handled easily by Valakat. Yeah, with the exception of a couple of little spurts here and there where I think the Wolves got running around a little bit more than they would like to, I think for the most part, um, you know, shots, if you're going to give up 16 shots and, and 13 of those are from 20 to 30 feet out, you're going to live with that every time. Um, there were a couple of stages in there where I think they, they did get...